morning. Um, it's a big pleasure to welcome all of you here in the Badische Stahlwerke in Kiel. And first of all, I would like to thank um, very much our host, uh, the Badische Stahlwerke, uh, Mr. Weizmann and Mrs. Weizmann. You have a lot of responsibility for your artist colleagues, yeah. European-wide. And I must say, the way uh, they are treated, the way they are uh, compensated is, is a shame. So you do definitely a hell of good work, and when you try to improve these conditions on a European scale, again, welcome, enjoy the stay, and work hard. Uh. We have a big schedule today, so I will try now to introduce a little bit what we are planning to do and to work on today. And at the beginning, Hans Abin, uh, artist, sociologist, and economist from Amsterdam, uh, correct me if I <laughs> will introduce uh, the subject of the special economy of art uh, to us and shed light on the value of art for a society. Uh, this will be followed by two lectures. Uh, first, two members from the Curious Workers' Brigade London, over there. Uh, we'll talk about the real working conditions uh, in culture and education, and um, present the activist and artistic approach to them. And then Julia Nazarus, hello, <laughs> from Haben und Brauchen Initiative Berlin will introduce the Harm und Brauch Manifesto and uh, current topics of Harm und Brauchen uh, is engaged with, what, what is going on actually now in Berlin, it's more Berlin focused. And uh, like Annette also mentioned to us, it was, uh, it seemed uh, important to invite especially also initiatives as they focus on, on questions that artists association cannot always uh, account for in this way. So these manifold activities um, of these independent working groups show also this emerging uh, necessity of these new, I, think, I would say, new methods to interfere into cultural politics. And yeah, then after this presentation, we have the chance to get into a discussion with, with all, all together. Uh, are artists rich is the big question uh, that we put uh, in the beginning, because, of course influenced by the book of Hans Abing uh, called Why Are Artists Poor? If there is an expectation of artist is within the art world. And um, I'm even arguing that uh, for profits... Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, For-profits treat artists sometimes better than non-profits. My main argument is uh, that uh, the everything for art mentality is not in the interest of the majority of, of artists. So all this time we have to serve art, art is so special, um, and everything we should do everything for art, work for free, you know, all that sort of thing works against us. It's difficult to leave the arts. So even though you may have been poor for 20 or 30 years, um, it's still difficult uh, to leave the arts like it's a form of treason. Yeah? Uh, and um, so that again is a form of hardship. You, f hardship. you feel like you may be better off if you would leave the arts, but it's, at the same time, you can't do it. And the funny thing is that if people do it, which is a very difficult decision, it seems to be, afterwards you feel relief. Uh, so, uh, who are we? we uh, the Precarious Workers' Brigade is a growing group of precarious workers in the arts, culture and education in the UK. We call out in solidarity with all those struggling to make a living in these sectors. Um, our practice and political projects are shared commitment to developing practical, relevant and easily shared and applied research, tools, strategies and actions, social justice, putting an end to precarity way of having some presence, for example, with the um, demonstrations organised by other unions and so forth, so it's to have like a, um, a presence on picket lines with, for cultural workers, so we don't have such unions, so, for, uh, so um, educators like working in the culture sector, artists, interns, students, you know, so there's uh, some form of solidarity in, um, 
in protest. The Turner Prize is uh, the biggest sort of art prize in the UK. Uh, it's the most prestigious. And, um, and it was going on while the tuition fees were being tripled. And so the idea behind the action was that, well, you can't have an art world uh, and you can't have Tate Britain and Tate Modern and the Turner Prize without graduates from, um, from art schools which also has a double bind to it because a lot of the time if you work as an artist or as a culture producer you're not actually at work uh, on that day so there's an interesting question in that how can you actually withdraw your labor or, or show protest if, if you don't actually have a workplace or a set schedule I said one more time is that uh, Isabel Graw the editor-in-chief of Texas to Kunst made it very clear in her latest book that we are as artists a sort of neoliberal role model uh, being creative, no social security at all, and very individual. And I think then it is as well our point as artists in order to change the role model, because it's, it's our thing. But since the mid-90s, the framework conditions of art and culture have been increasingly stipulated at the European level, be it for financial support for artists or questions regarding tax law, social law, copyright law, or mobility. In becoming one united Europe and the regulation progress caused by this, in for example the VAT tax, we don't want to fall back behind the best solutions we already reached for artistic work. How to preserve the true potential of the culture in the time of crisis? I think we should not only always say that it is a crisis. I think it is more a challenge. It is a challenge for a lot of creative people in all kinds of fields, also in politics. But especially creative people in this time, I just have been asked today because we had a very important event of culture in the parliament today. I have been asked uh, why we are doing this in the middle of crisis. I said because it's a time where creative people can really come out and give us another view on our life, which is not only the euro and not only the depth of the governments and the unwillingness of governments to work together. And I think in art we are trying to support also transnational, transnational uh, artists uh, coming together our, our work. So I think we try to do what we can, but we need the money, you know, at this very moment we have a big discussion on the money for the next seven years, from 2004 to 2020. It's a big problem, but I think even if we would, would not get the whole money we need for the whole budget, the budget we need for culture is so small that it cannot be cut, it can only be augmented, no, how to say, uh, added a little bit, so as the commission said, 37% we should add, I think we are in favor. And I hope we can reach at least uh, a little bit of this uh, augmentation.